In this tutorial for Manum, we're gonna be having a look at optimization animations. Now this one, I really, really like, personally, I think this real like I've gotten a lot of value out of Manum, which is, if you've ever tried to tutor somebody optimization, um, just algebraically, it's really, really hard, and so if you've got a nice visual to go along with that, it kinda helps explain what the heck you're talking about and what you're actually trying to achieve with the page of algebra that kind of gives you, okay, bang, X equals this, right? So it helps really unfold and, you know, get a concept of what the heck's going on. But this tutorial is gonna be a little bit different. I'm just gonna do it on the fly. So pretty much the, opti and there's lots of optimization problems. The one I'm gonna focus on is, I'm just gonna put on the screen post-production, which pretty much is you've got a, a, like the unit circle and then you've got a rectangle that's inscribed within the unit circle and what are the dimensions that give you a maximum right because you know it can continuously change but where do you need to stop for the area to be smack bang on the maximum so we're going to have a look at you know getting a visualization for that so we start off we open up python in our vs code we get manum so we go from manum import everything right start First thing you do, otherwise the interpreter is not gonna know what to do. Now firstly, there's not like a callable box within a circle that I can get, so I'm just gonna create one. So I'm just creating a function um, and creating a function within Python, you go def, and I'm just gonna call it, I'm just gonna give it a name, get enclosed box. Okay, now I like to think of things mathematically, so I'm gonna be calling this within like an axis because the unit circle is gonna be defined on an axis. Um, it's gonna be dependent on some X point. Now I'm just gonna give it a color, just, you know, so it's variable, right, it can change. And this thing's got four points, one for each corner of your, on, like on the circle for your rectangle. So that's gonna give me my four corners. So I've got point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, which is pretty much, just think back to the unit circle. Okay, you've got um, x squared plus sine squared is equal to one. That's your, you know, it's your circle. You've got sine, cos, negative cos, sine, negative cos, negative sine, cos, negative sine, all right? And so you get all of those to match up. So that's gonna give me four points and I wanna create a polygon that's gonna put all of that stuff together. So I'm just gonna call this area is equal to polygon and I want the vertices to go from point one, get the center of it, just so I can call, I'm actually calling it to a point that it can touch. So the dot, get the center of the dot, and then to the second one, and so on. Okay, now I can customize this a little bit, so I'm gonna give it a stroke color is equal to the color, and that is gonna be in reference to this color right here. Uh, I'm gonna go fill color is equal to color and then fill opacity is equal to 0.5. Now I wanna call this, so I'm gonna have my result is equal to a vector group of stuff which contains the dots and the area. Okay, and then it's going to return the result. So it's gonna it's going to return the vector group of the whole bunch of stuff. So pretty much what I've created there is a function which I can call onto the screen. It's gonna be a mobject which has got four dots and a polygon. And that's gonna be called onto a particular axis that I define in my scene. With that ahead, let's get into it. So I have a little thing about what I want on the scene. I've got to define things mathematically. So I want an axis. I'm going to go axis is equal to the axis where I've got X range going from zero to 1.1, Y range going from zero to 1.1, and the length, let's make them five. And let's add some coordinates. So there I've got an axis. So that's gonna, that's gonna give me my axis. Now I wanna create my circle. Now on the Cartesian plane, I could do this um, by using an upper semicircle and then a lower semicircle with two separate functions. Uh, or you could just create the parametric function, which is what I'm gonna do in my case. So my circle is equal to uh, axis.plot parametric curve where I've got 
where this is a lambda function with time. Uh, we've got... Okay, so right there on my scene, I've got my axis and then I've got my circle that's called onto the axis. Now, a lot of these things are gonna be dependent on a value tracker, which I'm just gonna call K. Uh, and I'm gonna have it at one times degree. So it's just gonna start off at the point one. Not gonna make it start off at the point zero because when I initially add stuff to the scene, I want the rectangle to be there. I don't want it to just be a flat line. I kinda want it to be out like around the unit circle, one degree. So it's like a tiny, tiny little thing. Now I'm gonna add the area. Now this thing is always updating, so we're going to constantly redraw it. Uh, and it is from def, oh no it's not, it's get enclosed box, uh, where this takes in an axis, so axis is equal to axis, because I've called that axis. Um, it's also going to take in an x value, which is equal to k.get value. Uh, and the color, oh no, let's make it, let's make it blue. A nice blue rectangle on the axis. Cool, so what I've got so far is I've got an axis, I've got my circle, I've got a value tracker, and as that value tracker changes, the circle is gonna be moving around. Very cool. Okay, and then what I'm thinking would also be pretty cool is if I had like that on the left and like the actual graph on the right. So if I was in a classroom setting, I could kind of pause it, go through the maths on the whiteboard, point to the animation and you know try and get an understanding of what, like, what's going on here. Now obviously you could code this however you like. So I'm just going to do that. So this axis, I'm gonna two edge, let's put it to the right edge. And instead of having a Y and an X, uh, Y we want it, yeah, we only want it to be about four long there. Oh, that's gonna be too long. Uh, and X, we can go up five, that's no problem. Actually, no, we'll just keep it at five, five. We'll make both five, five. Okay, so now that's got all my stuff that's gonna be to the left, and then on the right, I wanna have my, I wanna have the, like once you go through and solve it algebraically, you're gonna get the area as a function of X. Then what you wanna do is pretty much just put that into code. Okay, now I'm just calling this axis plane as the axis so I don't get confused. Now the graph that I'm gonna be calling here, I can just go plane.plot, and the function is a lambda function given by x, and I've already done my maths beforehand, so I know it's gonna be four x uh, times by a one minus x squared, and that's square rooted and the x range. Now, oh, this would actually look pretty nice if, if it was constantly updating, okay? Now, what I mean by that is like, imagine as the dot is moving around the first quadrant of the circle, the graph is unfolding in sync with the same value tracker. That'd be pretty cool, so let's do that. So we'd have always redraw, redraw, lambda, uh, and the X range would then go from zero and it would go from not to the value tracker because the value tracker is in degrees. We'd wanna convert that into a numerical value starting at zero, which is sine, because sine goes from zero to one uh, between zero and pi and two. So we could go sine of K dot get value, which would look pretty cool. Okay, and then we're gonna give that a color. Let's make it yellow. Great, so that's gonna be my graph that's there. And we're gonna give this a label. Uh, and the function is equal to four X square root. Now this is just a little bit of latex here. One minus X squared. Cool, and let's put this next to uh, plane up set color and let's make it yellow so it's like clearly you know that it's clearly given that that's the function of the graph on the axis okay so now with all that done i think of that's pretty much everything defined on the plane so let's get this playing out so we're going to add what are we going to add we've got an axis to add uh, we've got an area to add uh, we've got 
a circle to add, we've got a plane to add, we've got a graph to add, and we've got a label to add. Uh, and then we can just go self play k.animate.set value uh, and let's go to, well the maximum value is going to be at 45 degrees. So we can do that with a run time equal to I know, five. Uh, and then let's just go self wait. And let's see what that looks like there. And I'm just gonna render this in a low quality. So hopefully it just goes done. Ooh, I have an error. Fantastic. Where's this error? Always redraw, but the unexpected keyword argument X range. Okay, well obviously I've just stuffed up a parenthesis somewhere. Uh, and that's in, okay, so see, it's like a bunch of, this is the error code, a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff, I don't really know, but then it takes me to line 51 of my own code, so that's where I know I've stuffed it up. So let's go there, line 51, right here, always redraw, da 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 da. Bang, there you go, it's this parenthesis right here. That, I need to bugger that off, do I? I definitely do. That's better because I want to plot that function within that range. Yeah, I was just closing off the plot and then everything was kind of not reading properly. Okay, cool. Let's try that again. Okay, so I inspect, does this look how I want it to? Uh, absolutely not. What the f Okay, so I know why that's wrong. There's a couple of reasons. This, to the left edge, it was on the right edge. Secondly, uh, nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that. This Y range needs to go up to 2.1, recheck my maths, the maximum area is two. Um, so that range was off, so it just meant that things look a little skewed. Uh, that's the right, that's fine. Now. Are they equally? They absolutely should be. Let's see what this looks like now. Okay, so that's over on the left. Okay, again, I can absolutely see what the problem with this is now. This axis is, it's a unit circle, you idiot. Why are you going from zero to one? It should be negative one to one. Uh, that's looking a lot better there, okay. So right back up here, idiot, idiot, 1.1 and 1.1 there. That's great, and so now I think if we also add k.animate.set value, let's go 85 times degrees, and let's give this a rate function of there and back with pause. And let's render this at a little bit of a high quality so we can see exactly what we've got so far. Okay, that's much better, right? That's that's looking a lot better, yeah. So, okay, now obviously you can change the speeds and all that stuff. So hopefully you can see, like, there's a little bit of trial and error that goes on with these animations, but it really doesn't, like, what, that took, I don't know, like 20 minutes, I'm gonna fast forward a bunch of stuff. 20 minutes to make that animation, you kind of just think, what exactly do you want it to look like? How do you define it mathematically? And then you just let Madam do all the visualizations. 